Hi everyone, so we just got a new command in Mid Journey, and besides being super impressive and a lot of fun, I think it actually might be the most powerful prompt tool we've gotten yet. We're gonna take a deep dive into Describe today, plus take a closer look at tokens and see how by combining those two things, we just might change your entire approach to prompting. So using describe is simple enough. You just issue the command backslash describe and a window will pop up for you to drop in a reference image. For today as an example, we're gonna be using an image that I generated in a previous video. This was based off of a text prompt that I think I picked up off the community feed. It's one of those seriously super long prompts. You can see it on screen there. Uh, you know, everything from 35 millimeter, Unreal Engine, studio lighting, beautiful. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, obviously. It's, it's, it's massive, right? So we're gonna take that image and run it in Describe. So let's take a look at the prompts that Midjourney returned to us. Uh, I'm not gonna read through all of these. In fact, actually later on in the video, I've got a thing. If you do wanna really look at the prompt, um, you'll have the ability to do so. For the first one, we have a woman is wearing an ancient style in the streets of Paris, uh, Byzantine inspired uh, National Geographic photo. Uh, the third one references Provia, which is actually a film stock um, from Fuji uh, and Queen Core. That's a, that's a really cool keyword there. Um, okay, so let's take a look at what images these end up generating. Looking at our outputs, this is what came back from the first prompt. Uh, it's interesting, Midjourney did the thing where it uh, split the photo into two, uh, kind of creating a montage. That happens from time to time. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why. There was nothing in the prompt that necessarily indicated to do so, but you know, there you go. Our second prompt returned this to us, which to be honest, I'm not super keen on. It's much more in a painterly style and it's not something that I was necessarily looking for, but I can see how if you were iterating or exploring ideas, it would be kind of cool to see this take on it. Our third prompt, the one that mentioned the Provia film stock, uh, returns us these images, which are much more photographic in nature. Um, they're cool, but I'm not a huge fan of that bullseye composition. I actually much preferred the original's like lower angle, slightly offset composition. I thought that was a cooler shot. Uh, let's move on to the fourth one, where we return to that more painterly style. Um, I do think that the trick with Describe is to take a look at what Mid Journey outputs and then sort of hybrid them together into sort of your own Uber prompts. We'll circle back to that in a second, but in the meantime, I did wanna try out using an actual photograph as opposed to our first example, which was a mid-journey generated image. So this is an actual photograph that I shot. Um, I know it's getting harder and harder to tell, but I, this is a real photo. And I wanted to see what came out of Describe with this image. In all four instances, Midjourney did identify the waterfall. What I did find interesting was that it was calling out lenses. Um, so I shot this on my Canon R6 with just the kit lens, uh, but Midjourney was kind enough to give me Carl Zeiss lenses that I can't afford. But it is interesting to note that things like the focal length and the shutter speed are actually in the image's metadata, uh, but that is not appearing in the Midjourney prompt, meaning that Midjourney is not scanning through any kind of metadata on the images that you upload to generate its prompts. It's simply looking at the image. One of the prompts returned us these sets of images, which uh, the third one in particular, I actually really like. It actually really looks like a little bit further down the stream from where I shot that photo. So, you know, kudos. But I think the most important thing about Describe is, is that it's giving us a look at how Midjourney really views prompting and gives us a peek into Midjourney's vocabulary. So here's my breakdown of two prompts that Midjourney returned back to us. Um, the first one is a young woman in a dress in medieval or Renaissance costume stands on the streets. I label that as subject in the style of dark gold and dark aquamarine, intense close-up ornamental imagery. Uh, that would be a style. Strong facial expression, I consider that acting and Soviet photo taken with Provia, uh, and that is kind of camera. Queen Core is just kind of hanging out there. I'm not sure what that's doing there. I don't really have a particular label for that. Um, I guess that would be just an overall reinforcing of a style. And for the second one, which was an image that I generated on another set of Describe based off of that same uh, initial image, uh, came in as a uh, woman in jewelry standing down an alleyway, again, subject, in the style of classical historical genre scene, turquoise and amber, again, style, exaggerated facial feature, intricate costumes. I would kind of put that into the bucket of acting, even though intricate costume would sort of more be like wardrobe, but I think that's all part of the overall character design. And then finally, National Geographic photo close up 
aka resolution, that all sort of fits into the camera bucket. And that's not to say that you need to stick in this particular prompt layout of subject style acting camera, but I do think it shows that Midjourney prefers that those ideas be grouped together into sort of buckets. Okay, circling back to our original image, I did want to mention that you can actually modify the suggested prompts as well. For example, I wasn't happy with that initial composition, right, where it was sort of bullseye and dead on. So I'm going to change the first suggested prompt and add in low angle close up shot. And then I'm going to weight that at five and let's see what we end up with which got me this image, which is much closer to the composition that I was looking for. So I think the overall takeaway is really to try to crib as much as you can from Midjourney's describe function, but don't be afraid to add your own little details in there as well. Before we move on to the next section, if you are enjoying this video, I do invite you to hit the like and subscribe button. Additionally, this week I put together a notes PDF for everyone. Uh, it's free. You can just download it at the link below. It's on Gumroad, so just hit zero for the price. Um, although if you want to make a donation to the channel, I am certainly not turning that down. All right, let's dive into the next section. Okay, so tokens. I talked about this briefly in the Midjourney underused commands video I did a little while back. Um, basically, when you issue a prompt, the Midjourney bot will scan it and break it down into individual words and phrases to serve as the building blocks for your image. Those are tokens. Midjourney documentation actually has a B analogy uh, in there where you can think of Midjourney as releasing a swarm of bees on your prompt with each of them collecting pollen from the prompt. The token bees then use that pollen to assemble your image. But each Imagine job can only have about 72 tokens. At least that's the number that I've seen scouring through all the documentation and I haven't really seen refuted. The thing is, is that larger prompts with lots of tokens will end up actually having the effect of weakening the tokens across your prompt because of the amount of pollen you have within them. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. And just to make things a little more complicated, we actually don't know how Midjourney distributes its token counts. Some words have more token pollen power to them and some have less. So it does turn into a little bit of an experiment to figure out which words contain more tokens than others. That said, how do we know how many overall tokens our prompt is issuing? Well, what's great is that we have a tool for that. So NovelAI.AI's tokenizer tool will actually allow you to put in a prompt and see how many tokens it is roughly issuing. So what you'll want to do is come into this drop down menu, make sure you're on clip tokenizer. So let's take that original prompt that we were working with. And we can see that that prompt is actually costing a whopping 294 tokens, which is obviously much higher than Midjourney's 72 token limit. It is interesting to see that you can actually go into this token IDs here and see those numbers. And that's actually what Midjourney is really seeing when you issue out a prompt. Now what's super interesting about Describe is that anytime you analyze one of the prompts that comes back to you, it's this one's 49. It's usually between like 49 and like 55 or 60. So it all stays well within the 72 token limit and actually even gives you some room to expand upon the prompt. But ultimately, I think the coolest thing about Describe is that we're getting a look at what Midjourney's vocabulary is and at the same time, expanding our own. For example, I did a Describe of the Marina Bay Sands Hotel in Singapore. Midjourney responded with the keyword Norman Foster, who I did not know was the architect of the building. I ended up clicking on the link and discovering, well, actually, it turns out he's done a number of other really iconic buildings that I did not know were done by the same architect. I think all of those buildings have been in Christopher Nolan movies too. Sea punk was another word that it gave me, which I did not know that it knew, but suddenly gave me these ideas for these kind of pirate themed images. Batik or Batik, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, uh, which is apparently an Indonesian technique of wax resistant dyeing that is applied to whole cloth. I, I did not know that was a thing, now I do. So I think one of the greatest things about Describe is that it gives us these little breadcrumbs for us to explore other artistic styles. I think as you expand your own artistic taste and vocabulary, it gives you more options to explore within Midjourney. But more importantly, that knowledge transcends Midjourney and expands the lens of your own life. Life, enriching it even more. Thanks so much for watching and please feel free to leave a comment below. My name's Tim. We'll see you soon.